God left you there for a reason. Isaiah 55, 8-9, King James Version For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. A man went with his children to a gathering. The gathering was for the children, and gifts would be given. When they got there, there were a lot of children. They were all allowed to enter the same time. They did not sit according to how early they came. This man left the gathering to pick up something in the car. When he got back, he told his children to leave where they were sitting and told them to sit at the back. They were surprised, because even if they will share gifts, it is ideal to start from the front and it will get to where they were sitting, but going to the back is strange. The man convinced his children to sit at the back. When it was close to the end of the gathering, they started sharing gifts, and they started from the back. These kids got gifts first. They asked their dad how he knew this. He told them he heard the organizers talking about how there are more children than gifts, and their gifts will not be enough. And since they did not sit according to how early they came, they should start giving the gifts from the back and not to disturb the program. This is the same thing that God is telling us to do, and we are complaining. He is telling us to leave that front seat and go to the back seat where we will be blessed more, but we are complaining. We don't like it that way. We want the front seat instead. Are we more intelligent than God? Do you see what God sees? God knows better than we can ever know. If He tells you to do something or if He puts you somewhere, it is not because He wants you to suffer but because He wants you to be blessed. The problem we have is that we don't always open our eyes to see beyond what our physical eyes can see. We don't open our eyes to see the blessings that God has given. We don't open our eyes to see the blessings that the Lord has surrounded us with. All we know how to do is complain and blame God. We all know about KFC now. We order chicken from them. We talk about them, but do you know the story of the owner? KFC was started by Colonel Harlan Sanders. He started by selling fried chicken in his roadside restaurant during the time of the Great Depression. It was just an ordinary restaurant that was not popular. Sanders did not complain of his condition. He did not say why is he making fried chickens instead of being an engineer, a doctor, a pilot, or a billionaire. He did not complain, but instead, he worked hard to make the restaurant big. Where are you now? The job you are doing, are you seeing greatness in it? Are you seeing yourself becoming great through that job? God has blessed you so much you are allowing your physical conditions to close your eyes from seeing the blessings. This is the time to open your eyes. This is the time to know what you are doing. This is the time to accept where God has left you and start seeing the opportunities of being there. Jeff Bezos worked at McDonald's when he was 16. He was restricted to the kitchen. He was not allowed to interact with the customers. Jeff used this to learn about leadership and customers. Now, he is the richest man in the world. Where are you now? No matter the situation, God has put you there to understand some things. He has put you there to know things that you ought to know. Job was a man who was tried in many ways. We know the story of Job. He was wealthy, and the Lord blessed him with many things. He lost everything in the end. His livestock, his children, everything was destroyed. Job acknowledged the fact that God allowed this for a purpose. God made him go through this for a purpose. Job 23.10, King James Version. But he knoweth the way that I take. When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. Look, you have to allow God to work on you. It may not be easy. It may not be exciting, but the result is always great. We always pray that we want God to bless us. We want God to do this or do that, but we don't want to go through the processes of getting what we have asked for. We cannot say that God should bless us when we are not ready to go through the true process. What you are going through is a process. What seems to be a challenge to you is a process that when you come out of it, you will be as pure as gold. You know how gold is purified. 
If you want to see gold in its beautiful shining state, you must put it inside the fire. It must go through the fire. It must be beaten, and in the end, you will get a beauty. The sword you can see and call a great sword went through fire. It was beaten. If these did not happen, the sword will not be great. How can you be called a warrior if you have not been to battle? How can you be called a conqueror if you have not fought any battles? This life is filled with challenges that you must face. You must not complain that God allowed you to face them. If God refuses to allow you to face these things, how will you become great? These challenges are the stepping stones to greatness. David was just a shepherd boy looking after the herd. He did not complain that his father and brothers are sending him to the field to look after the herd. He did not ask for a better place. He did his job diligently. David did not just look after the herd. He used the opportunity to gather experience in fighting. Many times the beasts will come to take his father's sheep, but he will go after it and kill the beast. If David had been complaining that he wasn't given a better job, he wouldn't have had the experience to fight Goliath. 1 Samuel 17, 34-35, King James Version. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion, and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went after him, and smote him, and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard, and smote him, and slew him. Why are you wasting time complaining instead of getting ready for a greater position? Where are you today? God has left you there for a reason. God knows what he is doing. He is not confused. He is not just playing games with you. God doesn't play games. He wants to prepare you for a greater position. Don't say God has forgotten you. After you have gathered, you need to move to the next stage in life. It will not take God anything to move you. If you think God has left you in the situation you find yourself, if you think the situation is too hard for you and you are doubting if God is with you, I want you to hold unto this promise that the Lord made. You know God is not a liar, and He will never break His promises. God said in Isaiah 43.2 King James Version that, When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee, and through the rivers they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. This is the word of the Lord. This is the promise of God to you. Will you still doubt him? Can you gladly go through that fire and come out as pure gold with high value? Can you gladly go through the water and come out like a fountain? Can you accept the challenge and come out as a warrior? You are a chosen generation. You have been selected to great exploits. You must go through the process of becoming great. Don't fear. Don't fear. The reality is that there is nothing that pervades the fabric of our lives quite like fear. The problem is that we as humans are too often willing to allow fear to rule our lives and dictate our decisions. Living in a state of perpetual fear, a state of constant fear, a state of unending fear, a state of of endless fear. All day long we are fearful, and all night long we are fearful. We as humans are by nature afraid. That was one of the repercussions of sin. Prior to Adam's sinning, humanity did not know what fear was. But the moment Adam sinned, fear entered his life and entered everyone to come after him. And the truth is, in the world we live in, there are so many, so many different types of fears. And is it just me? Or is it that the older you get, the more things are added to your plate that you could be fearful about? So many people who are in this world are constantly afraid. Afraid of the future. Afraid of the past. Afraid of getting sick, afraid of dying, afraid of rejection, 
afraid of losing their marriage, afraid of being replaced, afraid of losing their job, afraid of people talking about them, afraid of being embarrassed, afraid of defeat, afraid of failure. A lot of you are not functioning to your full capacity because of your fears, resulting with you living a life without peace because of fear. Do you know you are gifted? Every good and perfect gift cometh down from above, from the Father of the heavenly lights. God has put gifts in you, talents in you, businesses in you, but you won't do anything because you are afraid. For some of you, it's the fear of taking the next step in the next chapter of your life. You were just stuck in a situation simply because you were too afraid to move on. You were too afraid to look for something else. Attending a job you hate every day because you were too scared and afraid to start your own business or too afraid to look for a new job. So, you choose the safety and security in a job you know like the back of your hand, but you also hate. For some of you, it's a fear of a situation that is going on around you, and you are scared of the outcome. And others are even afraid of their own success. These fears suffocate the gifts God has given you, and they suffocate the plan of God in your life. What are you scared of? What is keeping you up at night? Is it the fear of failure? Everyone has failed at something at some point. Don't let fear stop you. The Bible says, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Fear is a powerful force. Fear will literally paralyze you. Fear will blind you to how much God loves you. Fear will cripple you so that you can no longer walk the path that God has set for you. You can no longer reach the top of the mountain where God has great things in store for you. The force of fear in humanity is so much of a problem that every time an angel appeared to anyone in the Bible, they always started the conversation by saying, Fear not. Fear not. Fear is a real problem. I want to read to you Psalm 27. I read this in any situation that tries to plague me with fear. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. Because the Lord is my light and my salvation, I am not afraid of anything. I am not afraid of dying. I am not afraid of any man. I am not afraid of any situation. And I am not trying to show off and brag about how big, bad and strong I am. It's not about my strength. Your strength and my strength is about as helpful as an umbrella in a hurricane. David said, the Lord is my strength. That's why the Bible tells you to be strong in the Lord. So you have a strength in He who is stronger than you are, stronger than your situation, stronger than any fear. Be strong in the Lord, not in yourself, but in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord, not in your own resources and your own capabilities, but be strong in the Lord. Ephesians 6 verse 10 Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. 
This Bible verse is not telling you to be strong in yourself. This verse has absolutely nothing to do with your strength. The strength is in Him. Because God is my strength, I can take on anything. I can overcome any enemy. I can run and not get weary. I am more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. I will not let anything scare me. Greater is He that is in me than he that is in the world. I will not be scared. I will not be afraid. I will not fear. I have faith in God. Cry out to Him to fight for you and with you. You can't do it on your own. Rely on God. Put on your armor. Fear not death. Fear not devils. Fear not disease. Fear not tomorrow. Fear not people. Why? Because the Lord is your strength. Not only is He your strength, He is Emmanuel in your life. Emmanuel means three things. First, God is for you. He is not against you. No matter what you have done, His plan is to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you a future and a hope. Secondly, Emmanuel means God in us. Fear not, because greater is He that is in you than he that is in the world. That means the God inside you is greater than whatever situation you may face. The God inside you is greater than your fears. The God inside you is greater than any medical report. The God inside you is greater than any situation. Your God will make a way, even when there seems to be no way. Thirdly, Emmanuel means God with us. Somebody needs to hear this today, because they are walking through the shadow of death, the shadow of failure, the shadow of disease. But remember, God is with you. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You have to deny fear. I will fear no evil. You have to make up your mind. I will fear no evil. This doesn't mean you are immune to fear. But any time you feel fear creeping in, stand up and say aloud, Not today, Satan. I will fear no evil. Stand in the midst of the chaos and speak to that fear, and I guarantee you that fear will have to back up. In other words, stand your ground. Ephesians 6 verse 10 Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Don't be afraid to walk through life. Don't be afraid of the challenges life will throw at you. Don't be afraid of the future because God is your strength. You need to stop allowing fear to control you. Control your decision making. A lot of you are not living the life God intended for you because of fear. What is fear holding you back from?